if you are there for redemption. Somebody I said, if you are there for redemption, total redemption, complete redemption, lifetime redemption. What are you? It's coming your way. I said, it's coming your way. This morning, we're having a great time together. And tonight, somebody help me shout tonight. It will be another memorable time together in Jesus' name. Every need of your life, every need of my life. Every challenge in your life, every challenge of my life. Every good thing you desire, the Lord is going to grant unto you in Jesus' name. Federal capital, amen. Give it to the Lord. It's of no sense. Father, in the name of Jesus, we well, thank you because we are gathered here together so that you can bless your people. Lord, I'm asking today, you bless your people in Jesus' name. Redemption for the soul, for the body, for our lives, for our families, for everything outdoors, and for everyone present here today. Lord, total redemption for everyone in Jesus' name. As we lift up Jesus, your power will touch every life. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. I won't release you to sit down until you give me an FCT. Amen. God has blessed you already. You can sit down. We're coming to Hebrews chapter 3. And I'm reading to you from verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him. As also Moses was faithful in all his house, for this man, Christ Jesus, for this man, Emmanuel, for this man, God with us, this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who has built the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by some man, but he, but he that hath built all things is God. Verse 5, and Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after, but Christ as a son. Over his own house. Whose house are we? If we hold fast. The confidence. And the rejoicing. Of our hope. Firm unto the end. Those verses have read to you. Reveal Christ. In his exaltation. Christ. In his power. Christ. In his authority. Not only that. It reveals our partnership. We are partakers. Our position. Because we identify with him. It reveals our possession. What we have in Christ. The exalted Christ. As I look at that passage today. I'm talking to you on our position. Our possession. Through the exalted Christ. Our position and possession through the exalted Christ. Look at verse 1. It says, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle, consider the high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. It says, we consider him. For a sinner to get saved, he must consider Christ. 
And for you as a believer to be sanctified, you must consider Christ the more. And for you to have the power of heaven. As we're told in Hebrews chapter 6, that you are testing the power of heaven, of the word of heaven. You need to consider Christ who is sick in your body. You ought to be healed. You need to consider Christ the more. You are oppressed. And you have pressure upon your life. And there's a destructive power of the enemy that is making you to be in bondage. You want to be free. You need to consider Christ. That's what the epistle is telling us in that chapter 3. Look at this. Number 1 is talking about the priesthood of Christ. It says, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, the priesthood of Christ. He is the one that leads you to Christ, that leads you to God, brings you to God, forgives all your sins, and then makes you to have a membership in the household of faith, the priesthood of Christ. Look at verse 2. Who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. He's talking about Christ, a sinless life, a spotless life, his perfect life, his holy life, that he did everything in faithfulness to God. Number two there is the perfection of Christ. Christ, without sport, without sin, without fault, faithful, through and through. Number one, the priesthood of Christ. Number two, the perfection of Christ. I'm looking at verse 3. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who has built the house has more honor than the house. He's saying more, 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 more glory, more honor, more exaltation. That's talking about the preeminence of Christ on earth, in heaven, in religion, for our redemption, to meet your need and to satisfy every need of the heart of man. The preeminence of Christ as you come to him today and as you renew your dedication to the Lord today, you make him preeminent in your life somebody give me a good amen. amen at salvation it becomes present without salvation you don't have Christ you have not touched Christ you have not received any benefit of connection with Christ but at salvation it becomes present in your life but you know the believer doesn't just stay at the gate of salvation. The believer moves on and we have sanctification and Christ becomes prominent in your life. There is an experience called the immersion in the Holy Ghost. Baptism in the Holy Ghost. In feeling of the Holy Ghost. The indwelling of the Holy Ghost and it becomes preeminent in your life. Christ present, Christ prominent, Christ preeminent. It talks about the preeminence of Christ in heaven, on earth, in the early sanctuary, in the temple, and now in your life as a believer. Come with me to verse 4. For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. It's talking about his ability to create, his authority to create. It's talking about the very fact that he that built all things is this Emmanuel, God with us. It's talking about the power of Christ. If he's able to build all things, it's going to build your life. I'm talking to somebody there today. I said they will build your life. 
anything that is down in your life, he'll raise it up with the power of resurrection. And anything that is destroyed in your life, a new creation, the one that created the whole universe, that power is still here today. Jesus Christ the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Thank God is going to work on you today. What's the person I'm talking about there? He'll work on your life. He'll touch your life. You'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. The power of Christ. Come to verse 5. It says, And Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. Remember? He's talking about Moses. And then he talks about Christ higher. Christ is higher. I said Christ is higher. I, wa I wanted to hear your voice. You're talking about Aaron. Christ is higher. You're talking about Moses. Christ is higher. You're talking about Joshua. Christ is higher. You're talking about David. Christ is higher. You're talking about prophets. Christ is higher. You're talking about the angels. Christ is higher. Number five, the position of Christ. The position of Christ. Think about anyone. Moses and any other man. Man of the past, a man in the present, a man in the future. Christ is higher. The position of Christ is priesthood, is perfection, is preeminence, is power, is position. Now our response. Look at verse 6. But Christ, as his son, over his own house. Whose house are we? If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. After I've spoken about Christ, then he brings you in, brings me in, brings us in. And he talks about, in verse 6, our perseverance in Christ. Our perseverance in Christ. As you come to Christ, you will abide in Christ. As you come to Christ, you will continue in Christ. And everything that heaven has, a, has a ordained to do in your life, he will do in Jesus' name. You are going to become a complete man. A complete woman. And everything heaven can do with the power of creation, that work will be done in your life even from this morning in Jesus' name. As I told you, we're talking on our position and possession through the exalted Christ. Three things we're looking at. Number one, our experience and privilege in Christ. Our experience and privilege in Christ. Number two, the exaltation and preeminence of Christ. The exaltation and the preeminence of Christ. Point number three, our expectation. Somebody is expecting something there today. I said somebody there is expecting something today. Your expectation will not be cut short. Realization will come. Glory will come in your life. Honor will come in your life. It's going to take every shame, every suffering, every sorrow out of your life in Jesus' name. Our expectation and perseverance in Christ. Our expectation and perseverance in Christ. Number one. What's your number one over there? Our experience and privilege in Christ. I'm coming to chapter 3 verse 1. It says, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. He's talking about Christ. is the center of our lives. 
It's talking about Christ. It's through him we enter into the kingdom. It's talking about Christ. It's through him we are striving to be able to walk in the narrow way that leads to glory, that leads to heaven. And it says, consider him. What do we have in him? Number one, we have salvation in Christ. Salvation in Christ. You have salvation today. I said you have salvation today. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9. But we see Jesus was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Crowned with glory and with honor. That he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. The soul that sinners, it shall die. It should die because of your sin. It shall bear your own punishment. Everyone will carry his own load. It shall carry your load of punishment. But Jesus said, no, I love you. I love you. And the love of Christ has come to you today. And he suffered for you. So that he can bring God to salvation. Look at verse 10. For it became him. For whom are all things. And by whom are all things. In bringing many sons to glory. To make the captain of their salvation. Perfect through suffering. That's why he says. In chapter 3, verse 1, Wherefore, holy brethren, it is that salvation that makes you a child of God. You know you are a sinner. You know you have been a sinner. You turn away from your sin, and you come to the Lord Jesus Christ, and your life will never be the same again. And then it says, These who do the will of God, after you are born again, you are doing the will of God. They are my brothers and sisters. They are my brethren. In fact, it tells us something. Look at chapter 2 and verse 17. As it, as it tells us what we have, the privilege we have in Christ, and the experience we have got. Look at verse 17, chapter 2. Wherefore, in all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest. That's what he's done for us in all things. But turning to God, listen to this, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. As our high priest, he has reconciled us to God. We're far away from God. There's a great gulf, a great chasm between us and the only God. We were sinful. He is sinless. We were faulty. He is faithful. We were in degradation and disgrace. But he's in glory and honor. And to bridge that gap and to bring us to God, he made reconciliation. Reconciliation, that means the enmity between you and the almighty God, that enmity is cancelled. And the moment you say yes to Christ, yes to Christ, and you say, I give my life to him. He is my savior. I receive him, I accept him. It makes that reconciliation. Number one, salvation. Number two, reconciliation. Number three, redemption. That's what he's done for us. Eternal redemption. A wonderful redemption. It brings us out of the slip market of sin. While you are drinking in sin and roaming in sin and living in sin, Christ brought redemption. That the chain that bound you, the fetters that bound you, it breaks all the fetters. It tells us sin. Hebrews chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 12. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place. Look at this. Having obtained eternal redemption for us. Having obtained what kind of redemption? Eternal redemption for us. Because his blood is greater than the blood of all the animals in the world. Now that Christ has shed his blood for you, that shed blood, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Judgment will pass over you. Indignation will pass over you. The wrath of God will pass over you. 
because now he has obtained by his blood eternal redemption for us it's granted us salvation salvation is yours today redemption redemption is yours today and the reconciliation reconciliation is yours today the amens are going down look at chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 11. chapter 2 reading from verse 11 for both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all of one for which cause is not ashamed to call them tell me the name there brethren you see he's talking about holy brethren and this is what makes us holy brethren it says it's not ashamed to call us brethren you know why because he sanctified us what sanctification there is a nature of sin in everyone that is born as a descendant of adam it's called depravity the original sin the propensity to sin the one that draws us like a magnet all the time to do what is wrong to say what is wrong and to act in a wrong way that propensity that magnet that depravity it takes away and he's the only one that can do that it says he that sanctifies and him or her that is sanctified they are all of one of which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren what do we have because of christ what's our privilege because of christ salvation what's our privilege reconciliation What's a privilege? Redemption. What's a privilege? Sanctification. What's a privilege? Christ's nature. Look at chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 14. It grants us its nature. A new nature is coming to you today. I said a new nature is coming to you today. Look at verse 14 of chapter 3. For we are made partakers of Christ. Partakers of his nature. Partakers of his love. Partakers of his goodness. Partakers of his grace. Partakers of his fullness. For we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. You know, there are different kinds of nature. The lion has its own nature. The elephant has its own nature. The insects have their own nature. Men, natural men, who have never visited Calvary, they have their own nature. And Christ has his own nature. And when you come to Christ, when you touch him, and he touches you, he takes the animal nature away from you, and he gives you the nature of Christ himself. Thank God I have his nature. I said somebody there, thank God I have his nature. You'll never be the same again when you have the nature of Christ. He'll direct you. He'll lead you. He'll control you. He'll make you to do things according to his will. He'll make you to have the love of God. He'll make you to have the character of Christ. Look at this in 2 Peter chapter, chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. According as his divine power. He has given unto us. How many things over here? All things. Somebody there is going to have all things today. If you believe, you are going to have all things today. All things spiritual. All things natural. All things physical. All things from heaven. All things supernatural. According as his divine power. He has given us unto us all things that pertain unto life and to godliness. Through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue. You are called to glory. Glory will come to your life today. 
disgrace will get out of your life ignominy will get out of your life shame will get out of your life and all those things that are not uh, enjoyable in your life they're going away today in jesus name he has called us to glory and to virtue look at verse 4 whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of tell me ye might be partakers of i said tell me divine nature you must ask yourself the question as you look at your life as you think about your life as you look at your actions as you look at your behavior as you look at your thoughts as you look at your relationship with other people as you look at your plans as you look at your inner motivation whatever drives you to do what you do in the office at home in the church or anywhere does this reflect the divine nature line does that reflect the divine nature that in language does that reflect the divine nature habitual sinning sinning without a conscience does that reflect the divine nature in the public in the private bringing the name of christ to shame by your attitude by your behavior does that reflect the divine nature things are changing today somebody there said things are changing today look at this whereby i give you to us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption i have escaped I can't hear you. I have escaped. And you know, our country is talking about corruption. And what a shame that anybody that names the name of Christ like you will be involved in any corruption that was stealing. And that now that I'm making investigation this and that, you're afraid. I thought you had the nature of Christ. I thought you have escaped the corruption that is in the world through lost today if you have not escaped before you escape today say i have escaped corruption will not be part of your life anymore you know corruption leads to condemnation if you have corruption here you'll have condemnation on the other side of the grave in eternity but today as you give your life unreservedly to christ and you say from your heart in your mouth, in your hand, in your life, everything will show you have escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. That's what we have. That's what we get as we have experience and privilege in Christ. And then we're going to be in that better land eventually. Well, if there's no answer, I am going to be in that better land eventually. When the name is called up yonder, I will be there. I don't know about that other person there. I said, I will be there. I said, I don't know about the people who just came as spectators. I'm not a spectator here today. I will be there you'll be there in jesus name look at hebrews chapter 11 hebrews chapter 11 i'm reading here from verse 14 hebrews chapter 11 verse 14 for they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country truly if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out they might have had opportunity to return but now they desire what kind of country now they desire what kind of country a better country that is a heavenly 
Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared for them a city. I'm going to make it personal. He has prepared for me a city. I said he has prepared for me a city. I said he has prepared for me a city. I pray you'll be there. That's a privilege. That's an experience. We experience salvation. We experience reconciliation. We experience redemption. We experience sanctification. And it's a privilege to have Christ's nature. It's a privilege to have sonship. It's a privilege to have the glory of God, the honor of God in our lives. Through who? Through Jesus Christ, the exalted and the preeminent one. Point number two now. We're looking at the exaltation and the preeminence of Christ. The exaltation and the preeminence of Christ. Look at chapter 3 of Hebrews. I'm reading from verse 2. Who was faithful to him that appointed him as also Moses was in all his house. For this man, Christ. For this man, Emmanuel. For this man, Jesus, for this man, our Savior, for this man, our Redeemer, for this man, the supplier of all things in our lives, was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he was builded the house as more honor than the house. For every house is builded by some man. But he that built how many things? All things is God. For Moses truly, verily, certainly was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken of. But Christ as his son over his own house. Christ as a son. You want to understand that Christ is a faithful one. And I pray that his faithfulness will be revealed in your life even here today in Jesus' name. Look at Revelation and see how he introduces himself to the church. And how he's introducing himself to you today as he's giving you a promise is a faithful one. I see manifested in power, his power in any other life is a faithful one. As he said, he'll set you free is a faithful one. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 14, unto the angel of the church of the Lord, this is right. The saying says he, the amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning and the creation of God is the one, the originator. Of all the creation of God, the faithful one. And then the Bible says, he has more glory. He has more honor. And when you come to Christ, that glory will flow into your life. That honor will flow into your life. Honorable brother so and so. Where is he there? Honorable sister so and so. Where is she there? God is going to do it. I said Christ is going to do it because he's the one that is building all things and he will build up your life. I said he will build up your life. Chapter 1 of Colossians, chapter 1 of Colossians, I'm reading from verse 18. For he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead. In that in all things, in how many things? In all things, I said in how many things? He might have the preeminence. In all things, he has the preeminence. And he's the one building the church. And he's the one building your life. And he's the one building your family. And everything that has crumbled in your life today, 
He will build you up. Matthew chapter 16 verse 18 And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I thought you would say amen. You are part of Christ's church. The devil will not prevail over the church. The devil will not prevail over your life. Over your family. Over everything that concerns you. And every yoke of the devil is broken out of your life today in Jesus' name. Christ is exalted. He'll be exalted in your life. Philippians chapter 2. In Philippians chapter 2, reading from verse 9. Philippians chapter 2. Wherefore, verse 9, God has highly exalted him. Who exalted Christ? I said who exalted Christ. That same God will exalt your life as you come to Christ, as you stay in Christ, abide in Christ in Jesus' name. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. The name of Jesus is greater than the name of your problem. Greater than the name of your sickness. Greater than the name of any demon that tries to torment you. And that name that's above every name will destroy every work of the devil in your life today. Verse 10, that at the name of Jesus, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The glory of the Lord will be revealed to your life even today in Jesus' name. As we read in the New Testament that Christ is above everyone, above Moses, above the prophets, above the angels, above anyone in the past, anyone at present, anyone in the future. Isaiah tells us in chapter 9, Isaiah chapter 9, reading from verse 6, he wants you to understand, he wants you to know, he wants you to esteem the name of Jesus, for that name is greater, higher than any other name. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, verse 7. For unto us a child is born. Who is that? Unto us a son is given. I said, who is that? And the government shall be upon his shoulder. The government of this whole world will be on the shoulder of Jesus one day. But today, the government of your life, the control of your life, the direction of your life will be on Christ in Jesus' name. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Wonders come into your life. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. The prince of peace, look at this, of the increase of his kingdom and peace, there shall be no end. Of the increase and of his government and of peace, power, prosperity in your life, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. There's a performance this morning. 
Where? I said there's a performance this morning. Where? In your life. I rejoice with you. The one that has all power. The irresistible one. The unstoppable one. The unconquerable one. The one that is exalted. And his name is above every name. And the one that will reign forever and ever. Upon this earth. In the millennial reign. And in the one that will sit on the throne. Forever and ever in glory. He comes to make your heart. The throne this morning. And something great will happen to you. Daniel chapter 7. In Daniel chapter 7. Reading from verse 13. I saw in the night visions. And behold one like the son of man. Son of man. Who is that? Son of man. Tell me the name. Shout it aloud. One like the son of man, Jesus came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days, that's to God Almighty. And they brought him, Christ, near unto him, the ancient of days. And there was giving him dominion and glory and a kingdom. And all people, nations, languages shall serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed did you say amen, amen. matthew chapter 28 we're looking at verse 18 matthew chapter 28 the exalted christ the preeminent christ the exaltation and the preeminence of Christ. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying. Everybody tell me aloud. All power is given unto me. I can't hear you. In heaven and in earth. He's standing before every oppressed person here today and he declares to you whatever powers of the past you have feared. He comes to you today and he says, all power, all power, all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. If you seek, he's standing before you today. And he's saying, all power is given unto him. If you are oppressed, all power is given unto him. Today is the day of your freedom in Jesus' name. He will do it in your life. He will do it in my life. I said he will do it in my life. You will not go back home the same in Jesus' name. Point number three our expectation do you expect anything this morning our expectation something is going to happen the lord is going to touch your life and that life will never be the same again in jesus name our expectation and perseverance in christ our expectation and perseverance in christ look up here for a moment I expect because of that I come. I want to keep on enjoying because of that I continue. And I want to be translated from here to glory because of that I continue to the very end. You come to Christ, you'll never look back. You come to Christ, you will stay and abide. You come to Christ, you are going to continue. And the goodness of God, and the grace of God, and the glory of God will continue in your life in Jesus' name. I see somebody there going stronger and stronger. I see somebody there going higher and higher. I see somebody here, the devil will not drive you back. What's the person there? Enemies will not drive you back. Persecutors will not drive you back. You'll be stronger than all your enemies. You'll be greater than all your persecutors. 
and you will be more faithful than the agents of Satan in Jesus name Christ will abide in your heart you will abide also in Christ every problem every yoke the Lord will destroy out of your life in Jesus name we come we continue I come I continue I come I continue I come and continue uh, you know sometimes you're walking around or you're going maybe in the states or somewhere and then you find that house they started building it is not complete an uncompleted house sometimes that's a project and it's an uncompleted project I am a project of the Almighty God Almighty, the Almighty God is working on me. He will not stop until he has finished. I will not be an unfinished project. Uh -uh. You can't say that for yourself. He will perfect your life. He will perfect your family. He will perfect the work of your hand. Every good thing you have laid your hand on will be completed to perfection in Jesus' name victory for you success for you progress for you glory for you and the completion of the project upon your life in Jesus name I will finish well I will finish well look at Hebrews chapter 3 verse 6 our expecting and perseverance in Christ but Christ as his son over his own house whose house we are do you belong to christ whose house we are if you repented of your sin you said bye bye you hold on to christ you trust him you believe him and you say he is my savior whose house are we then he says if we hold fast if we hold fast if we hold fast, look up here for a moment. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, even in church, if it's not that, you know, we have, uh, you know, the chance of having, uh, you know, the vitamin coming from the sun directly to us when we're under the aircon in the church, sometimes you find somebody holding a pain and then he's dozing and he's sleeping and then he's not able to hold fast because he's sleeping. And then the pen drops from him. The book drops from him. The Bible drops from him. And there are people, they're sleeping on their journey. They're sleeping as they have come to Christ. The Bible is dropping from their hand. Their faith is dropping from their hand. And their expectation is dropping from their hand. And their healing is dropping from their hands. And the goodness of the Lord is dropping from their hands. I will hold fast nothing will take my salvation nothing will take my blessing it says if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm until the end if there's anybody going to continue to look up at my face here it's me i will continue can i see your face can i see you there you will continue you will not stop your journey halfway. The joy of the Lord will follow you every way. And the goodness of the Lord will follow you all the days of your life. You'll endure to the end. I said you'll endure to the end. Look at verse 14. For we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Steadfast unto the end. I will not go back. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. And here we're reading from verse 11. Matthew chapter 24. We're reading from verse 11. Here it tells us in verse 11. And many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. They will not catch up with me. I said they will not catch up with me. You know, 
I'll be running so fast with this faith once delivered unto the saints that all the false prophets that are running after, I will run much ahead of them. They will not catch up with me. False prophets will not catch up with you. Evil will not catch up with you. Backsliding will not catch up with you. I've lost my crowd. I said backsliding will not catch up with you. Compromise will not catch up with you. Look at this, look at this, verse 12. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of everybody. The love of the polite people. The love of many shall wax cold. My love will not wax cold. Look at verse 13. But he, who is this? He, who am I reading about here? He, I mean what brother is here? He, which is the sister here? Thank God my name is there. But he that shall endure until when? Until the end, the same shall be saved. Thank God I'm saved. And I will continue. The power of God will continue with you. The blessings of God will continue with you. The glory of God will continue with you. All the good things the Lord has provided at Calvary will come to your life today and they'll continue with you in Jesus' name. But number one, you come. Number two, you continue. Number three, you conquer. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy lady, and I will give you rest. You are having that rest today. Then continue. If ye continue in my word, I will continue. Then are you my disciples indeed. And then you will conquer. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us and he gave himself for us. I'm looking for the conqueror. Where, is, where are you? You will conquer in Jesus' name. Come. Continue. You will conquer. One of these days, the trumpet shall sound. And the dead in Christ shall rise. And we who are alive will be caught up together with them. And when the saints go marching in, I will be there and you will be there. Come, continue, conquer. Rise up and let us pray. Rise up and let us talk to the Lord in prayer. There's blessing waiting for you today expectation today the goodness of God today salvation today reconciliation today redemption today healing today deliverance today the goodness of God today what a privilege you have pray and possess Pray and partake. Pray for the grace of God to persevere to the very end.